Hello, my name is Brandon, and this is a video about an experimental AI system that I've been working on. This AI has been a pet project of mine for about two years now, and has gone through a lot of iteration in that time. I've learned a lot through experimenting with this system, and this is going to be a rundown of everything I have so far, with some examples and some demonstrations of the AI as it is now. The short version of my goals for this AI is that it needs to be dynamic, it needs to have imperfect information about its environment, and it needs to produce systemic content for a game. The simplest part to discuss is how this AI will have imperfect information. Most AI have what is considered to be perfect information. This means that everything that it is possible for them to know about the environment, the player, and even the game state is freely available to them. The typical AI then has a clever system to choose what the AI should be doing in the game to make the experience for the player as good and enjoyable as possible. Sometimes these systems are extremely robust and can even seem like they're reacting directly to what they see you doing, but I think that if I want an AI to produce content for my game, even if I only want simple content, then the AI needs to not have access to all this information so that the content that the AI can make seems natural and interesting. So that is perfect information, so how does my AI have imperfect information? Basically, I'm making the AI figure everything out for itself rather than just being told relevant information. This means that the AI has a fully featured set of senses and a way to process this information so that it can be used in its decision-making process. Here's an example of how this change from perfect information to imperfect information can alter how interesting a player's experience is. Let's say that the player throws a rock at an NPC and then hides. If the NPC has access to perfect information, then it knows not only that the player threw the rock, but also that the exact position where the player is hiding, and also where they threw the rock from. In most games, the AI would then either do some kind of search functionality to trend toward to the player's location, or more likely, they would just run straight for the player and enter combat. However, if you have the same situation, where the player is throwing a rock at an NPC and then hiding, but the NPC only has imperfect information about its environment, then there's a lot more options about what can happen. Maybe the NPC looks where they think the rock was thrown from and then sees some other NPC standing there minding its own business, and so they go and try to fight them instead of the player. Maybe the NPC doesn't see anyone and then becomes more distrustful in the future. It really depends on what kind of game you make, but the point of this is that it allows for more emergent situations for the player to experience, and it's an interesting system for the player to interact with. Next, I want to talk about making the AI dynamic. There are several parts of the AI system that contribute to this, and I'll talk about each of them briefly. There's goals, NPC actions, needs, thinking, and checking. Goals are a sequence of actions that are meant to achieve something that the AI wants. So, for example, if the NPC is hungry, then it will first choose a place that it knows has food, go to that location, search for the food there, and then finally it would eat the food. This whole sequence is a goal that meets the AI's need for food. NPC actions, on the other hand, are specific steps that the goals take to get what the AI wants. These actions themselves are as generic as possible and take additional information from the NPC's current state to execute them in different ways. For instance, searching for food is really just a generic search function, but because the AI has recognized that it's hungry, it knows that when it's told to search for something, it's searching for food. Next, there's needs. Needs are how the AI can narrow down its options of what to do. This is the basis of how it picks one goal over another. The system is in direct contrast to the usual way that AI make decisions, which is to assign a scoring system for potential tasks, and then choose the task with the lowest score. There's a great video about this kind of AI and how it's been used in, in the games industry, and I'll link to that in the video description. The reason that needs are practical for my purposes is because I want the AI to freely interact with all other systems in the game. So my scoring system would have to cover so many varied situations it would become impractical to manage the AI using that system. Needs are also broken up into two simple categories, physical and personal, and each need is on a 0 to 100 scale. Physical needs encompass hunger, thirst, and exhaustion. Personal needs encompass safety and happiness. Physical needs decrease at a varied rate, and safety and happiness decrease very slowly over time, but also decrease as a result of events that happen to the AI in the game. As I mentioned before, needs are used in tandem with thinking to determine the goals the AI wants to do. Thinking is all of the general logic that the AI implements to pick a goal. This is where all the checks on the AI states and environment come together to result in actions. Thinking uses the same action sequence functionality as a normal goal, but it is trying to pick a goal rather than just complete one. 
This thinking goal is broken up into chunks, and the thoughts are checked in order of importance. For example, the AI will check its physical needs, and if it has to deal with a physical need, then it will pick a goal for that. But if it doesn't have a pressing physical need, then it will go on to checking its personal needs. After the thinking step to pick a goal, there is a checking step. Checking is the system that determines if an action in a goal has been completed or not. For this, I use a simple finite state machine where each state checks specific kinds of actions. The states that the AI has to check things with are think, walk, search, interact, and attack. Think is the state that all other states resolve to when they think they've completed an action, and the think state confirms this and progresses the goal to the next action. Walk checks for when the AI is at its target location. Search has all of the search functionality and uses the AI's senses to resolve a search query. Interact lets the AI know when it can interact with something it is targeted to interact with, and attack manages attacking a target. All of these things together make the AI able to interact dynamically with any system a game has. The final pillar of my AI is content production. This is the least fleshed out part of my AI because it is by far the most complicated. I've done testing and research on this, but I haven't progressed to the point of having some good examples of it because it relies on basically having a full-fledged game in order to really see it working. In overview, I see content production working using three main elements of an AI. Memory, personality, and passions. Memory is going to be a log of the AI's past events in a simple noun-verb-subject format. So if an AI sees someone steal something, then they will store this as Bob stole Apple. These memories can be used to choose goals the same way that the NPC checks their needs for an indication of what goal to do, except they would be searching through recent or long-term events that relate to them. This sort of system would also lend itself to creating small quests that are given by an AI dynamically because they have some kind of issue that they need resolved, or they have some kind of information that can contribute to other NPC quests. Personality, on the other hand, is a tool for directing these goals even further. Functionally, personality is all the things that make a particular AI unique. Most likely this will be a set of characteristics such as how honest an AI is, or how introverted an AI is, which will filter an AI's data through characteristics that are unique to them. This would also include things like an AI's relationship with other AIs, and more concrete things unique to an AI, such as specifically where they live in the world. The last part of content creation is passions. Passions are a specific part of an AI's personality that I got from a GDC talk by designer Ken Levine that I'll link to in the description of this video. Essentially, passions are overarching goals for an AI. They can involve factions or quests, or just actions that they particularly approve of, this is something that will allow for a designer to add specific kinds of events that can be caused by AI, and this can even result in a dynamic faction system for a game based on what several AIs might agree on. All of these elements come together to make for an AI that is dynamic, interesting, and can systemically create content for a game. In a basic way, everything I've talked about is currently in my AI system, but unlike past iterations of this AI system, it has been made to be added onto and more functionality is always being added as I make more complex testing environments for the AI to exist in. I would uh, really appreciate it if you let me know what you thought about this video. I put a lot of effort into trying to make this easily understandable, and hopefully, if nothing else, you found it interesting. Thank you for your time.